Good afternoon. We're here with Thibaut Clement from Loomly to talk a little bit about social commerce and their uh, new tool that will help that. We've seen a tremendous amount of growth in uh, social commerce in the last year. Can you speak to that? Yeah, of course. Uh, I think you know social commerce has been around. It's, it's, it's a term that has been coined more than a decade ago. But what's interesting is that it's really booming right now. And one of, you know, we think it's, it's the conversions of a couple of factors. Uh, number one is essentially, you know, of course, um, you know, the, the, the continuous uh, penetration of so social media in our lives, you know, in all aspects of our lives, we all kind of spend more and more time on, on, on platforms, uh, kind of regardless of our age and, and occupation and, and social background. So that's number one. Number two, um, you know, there has been a boom in e-commerce, uh, of course, uh, not necessarily in 2020, where we've seen, uh, you know, probably a decade worth of progress in under a year uh, with a major adoption of online shopping. And three, uh, which is extremely important, you know, we have the major players in social media who are investing a lot of money and efforts and energy into actually offering some social shopping features, which, you know, really wasn't the case before. Uh, we are seeing Facebook, you know, throwing their hat in the game. Uh, TikTok is, is, is coming up. Um, and so all of that is, you know, creating a lot of, of you know, competitive tension and, and new opportunities. Um, and so what's interesting is all of that is really converging to kind of, you know, um, change the way that we were seeing, you know, before Amazon was basically for shopping and Facebook was to meet with people. And now we are kind of, you know, uh, kind of seeing all of that come together. And so I believe this is kind of the main driving force that is uh, making social commerce skyrocket. And, and what are the, what's the advantage of social commerce over a standalone e-commerce site? Um, I, I know that obviously you're gonna aggregate some eyeballs through the social prospect, um, but it tends to be a little more costly than if you were to do it yourself. So can you talk about sort of the plus and minuses of social commerce? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, I believe if, if we if we start by by the plus, uh, the plus is I believe there are two main things. Uh, number one, if you don't have an online presence, so you know you don't have an e-commerce website, you don't even have a website. Uh, you just you know happen to have to switch to online due to recent circumstances. Then it's interesting because you know you probably already have uh, you know maybe like. A social account and if, even if you don't it's very quick uh to basically set things up and and you know you don't have to buy a domain name you don't have to uh, actually build a, a like an online store even if this is becoming easier and easier by the day thanks to platforms like shopify it's still you know uh, very very easy to set up facebook shops for instance so i would say if you don't have an online presence i would say it's it's probably one of the fastest way to do it um and to start selling number two uh, if you are in a different circumstance and, you know, you actually have an existing online presence with an audience, with a community, then uh, social commerce makes it very easy to reach them where they are and, you know, uh, allow them to shop for whatever you have to offer uh, while remaining inside a platform that they know and trust, namely the social networks. Uh, so I would say those are, you know, the main pluses and the main opportunities. Um, where you can basically take advantage of social commerce. Uh, one, I would say one minus or one, one thing that you want to maybe watch out for, uh, or at least be aware of, is that when you build on a social platform, you rely on that social platform. Uh, we've seen in the past, you know, for instance, uh, this is kind of the story of internet, right? Uh, when you were building an e-commerce website and you were relying on SEO, if there was kind of a change in, in the algorithm, then all of a sudden um, your traffic could be impacted. Uh, we've seen it, you know, recently with social networks changing their policies. So you, you have to be aware of that. So um, I believe that would be probably the main thing to be aware of. And one way to mitigate it is maybe to use social commerce as a complementary channel to whatever you are doing you know, elsewhere, rather than maybe just the only channel. And how does social commerce sort of differentiate from like, you know, the Amazon stores and the Amazon sort of marketplace? Yeah, um, that's, that's a good question. So I think, you know, we have to probably just roll back a little bit and understand what is different between just Amazon as a website and, and Facebook, for instance, as a website or Instagram. Instagram is probably a better example. If you go to Amazon, 
you are probably, you know, uh, what we can call an intentionist. You probably already know that you want to buy something. Uh, you want to buy an HDMI cable. You want to buy, um, you know, I don't know, like a, a something for your kitchen or something like that. You have something in mind already and you are ready to buy. Uh, you are there to actually make a purchase. On the other hand, if you are on Instagram, you're probably not there looking for an HDMI cable. You are there because, you know, you want to, you know, you have like five minutes uh, before jumping on the bus or, you know, while you are watching a, a commercial on TV or something like that. So you are scrolling, you're just having a good time. Maybe you are following people. And so you are, more, you know, at best you are window shopping in a way because, you know, you're interested in seeing, you know, what an influencer is doing or wearing or recommending. And so you're not there with the explicit intent to buy something specific. But you know you may be receptive to whatever is shown to you. Um, so once you know that, I think it's um, it's really interesting. Uh, once you know the usage that is quite different between those two uh, platforms, uh, it's interesting to see how that translates into shopping. Uh, if you are on Amazon, what you want is you want to have you know your products very well referenced so that you know whenever someone is searching for something, then you show up and you make a sale. Um, Instagram, um, you know, you have to have a different approach because what you want is you want to be, uh, you know, able to, uh, you know, create uh, the intention of buying and you want to make whatever you are selling very appealing. And that could be through influencer marketing, through very nice uh, product photography, through storytelling. And so I would say this is the main, the main difference. Again, uh, I don't it's think the one push is... versus pull sort of. Approach. Absolutely. Yes. yes. Uh, and I don't think one is better than the other. I believe, you know, the best as many times is to actually kind of use uh, each of those channels for the best that they have to offer. Yeah, I mean, and obviously this is something that, you know, the I think the numbers that you guys passed along was about 38 billion in the last 12 months on social commerce, right? Um, yeah. Do, are there, is there a different buying behavior when someone buys from social commerce versus a traditional e-commerce platform? Um, yeah, um, I believe there are there are a couple of things you know that that differ. Uh, and again, it depends on whether we're talking about Amazon or just you know maybe like a, a like a standalone e-commerce website that you would be managing versus uh, social commerce. Uh, I think you know that on you know on social media, probably the main driver of sales is impulse buying. So you know you see that very very nice watch for all that very nice you know, pair of sneakers and maybe you don't really need it because, you know, you were not really looking for it, but then, you know, it looks really good. And so you want it. And then all of a sudden at the click of a button, you don't even have to, you know, leave the platform. Sometimes you don't even have to input your, um, your credit card information. And then all of a sudden, boom, you've made a purchase. Uh, I believe on traditional, you know, e-commerce, uh, you know, again, you probably are looking for something uh, you need to feel a need. Uh, and so it's it's kind of a, you know, even if it's just a, a gift and then you need to uh, kind of find what you're going to buy and then you have to go through the entire process. Um, so I think, you know, this is what I would see as the main difference. And, and is influencer market, marketing a, a bigger uh, factor in social commerce? So um, you, said, you know, you see the sneaker and you like it, but if you see the sneaker on, you know, Shaq or somebody like, oh, I want to wear it because Shaq's wearing it, right? That, you know, so he becomes a social influencer. <laughs> yeah. It might have been uh, a bad reference. Really I don't know if he's yeah. talking no, no, these it's, days. It's but... I think, yeah, no, I think he was an influencer b before they were influencers. Right. So yeah, no, for sure. Um, well, I, I don't know if I would, um, probably the way I would look at that is kind of the other way around. I, I actually think that social commerce is going to reinforce influencer marketing because you know it's going to actually make it easier for influencers to sell products because you know they don't have to say hey look at the link in my bio or follow this link for like you know a discount and then you are redirected to another website no everything is kind of happening um inside the same platform and, and i think the best comparison we could have here is you can think of social commerce as in-app purchases that's what it is, uh, except that you're not buying, you know, coins or or or, or rubies for whatever game you're playing on on, on an app uh, mm -hmm. on your phone. You are just maybe buying goods, but the idea behind it is the same. 
And then we, we run into the traditional problem that we, we see is now we're on multiple platforms, there are disparate systems, right? And I'm assuming that's one of the problems that you're looking to address. Um, yeah, so Loomly, what we do, uh, you know, we, we like, we don't necessarily like focus on social commerce per se, but we've been, you know, uh, working on with brands uh, on social media for a very long time. So what Loomly is basically is it's a, a brand success platform. So what we do is we help marketing teams collaborate and streamline collaboration so that they build their presence on social media. And like you say, on multiple platforms, uh, you know, we're compatible with uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, uh, and, and so, and, and many more. And so the idea is that you have one place to uh, kind of manage all your platforms and you can actually customize the message for each platform, because as you may know, uh, each platform has its own code and culture and, and features. Uh, and so you want to kind of make the most of each. So yeah, that's kind of what we do. And the platform allows you to push the message directly from the plat one platform? Yeah, uh, so we help you with the entire content publishing platform from asset management to ID generation. And then of course, content production uh, and review and approval as a team. And then you publish, you respond to any kind of uh, comments you may receive, and then you measure your success uh, and you report so that you can uh, try and, and get better. And some of the things you know that, that we also do, which uh, I think are, are quite uh, exciting these days is that you can also from our platform, you can already boost any post that you have. So you, you create an organic post and then you use some uh, you know, advertising budget to reach a wider audience, or you can even create standalone ads, uh, which again, you know, really translates into um, social commerce because uh, one of the things that we've seen uh, skyrocket you know, in, the past, in the past year is basically uh, boosted posts. Uh, what is interesting with boosted posts is they are you know, essentially organic posts uh, so they kind of, you know, fit the bill of what an organic post is. They have to, you know, usually tell a story. They are not really crafted exactly like an ad. Uh, and, and so, you know, they resonate, they tend to resonate more because people are less banner blind to actual posts than they are to, to ads. And so once, you know, you understand that, you can still tell your story um, in an organic way, and then you can amplify whatever you are saying. And you know, it may happen that what you are saying is you are announcing a new product or you are actually teasing a new product, which is uh, even better. So yeah, this is something that we've seen. And, and what Loomly does is it's an agnostic platform that will talk to different social media channels. Yeah, that's what we try to do. Uh, you know, we, we support like a wide variety of, of uh, platforms. And, you know, we even have what we call a custom channel where you can actually prepare content for platforms that we don't support so that you can still, you know, uh, see how this is going to fit into your more you know, general brand storytelling and see how you are going to, um, you know, push on, on, on whatever uh, platform you want to, to publish. So yes, we, we, we like to see ourselves as platform agnostics and actually our goal, you know, uh, for the future, our vision is to even be content, you know, agnostic in the sense that uh, we already help you with organic posts and ads. And in the future, we want to support more and more types of content, such as, you know, product for e-commerce, email for newsletters, uh, articles for blogs. So that because, again, the reasoning is the same uh, as a marketing team. When you are building your brand online, what you want is produce great content, make sure it's on brand, that there is, there is no title and you want to publish it. Uh, respond to any interaction that you get and, and measure, learn from that and start again. And, and you said, <clears throat> what channels are available currently that you're working with? So we are working with uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Google My Business, um, Snapchat, and TikTok. And then do you also tie into all those sort of like, is there an integration with AdWords and Facebook ads? So Facebook and Instagram ads, yes. Uh, AdWords, not yet. Okay. On the roadmap? Uh, yeah, we certainly hope so. Somewhere, somewhere on the roadmap, right? Yeah, exactly, um, yeah. So, so the challenge that you're solving is this, these would otherwise be, uh, again, these disparate systems that people would have to go sign on to each one, do what they do, sign off, go on to, you know, sign on to Instagram, do what they have to do, and nothing's tied yeah. together, right? So that's what the problem that you're solving. Um, that's so that's that's one part of it um you know so essentially like you know we've seen like 
so what we do is essentially we are a marketing collaboration platform. So, you know, as, as soon as you are like more than one person who needs to put, you know, content out there and it's actually uh, concerning a, a growing number of people because, you know, like creating the content is so much work that, you know, there are more and more people involved. And so as, as soon as you are like more than one person who needs to put out the content, then, um, you know, that's where Lumni really uh, becomes extremely powerful because you can manage all your assets in one place for all your channels. Uh, you can create a content and customize it for you know, all the channels. You can um, get approval from anyone who is working with you. And, you know, it could be uh, your boss, it could be your client, it could be your copywriter, your designer. It could be from someone, you know, in, your, in another department, maybe, you know, in sales or product or HR or legal. Uh, and so that, you know, whatever you know you are creating you can green light it before it goes out and so that you know helps tremendously with telling a consistent story across channels and over time um and so that's you know mainly the pain point that we saw and then of course we have the publishing and comment or community management features and, and yeah. reporting but, but but i mean some of those features we've used on stack right um so with this but what you do is you've integrated so when you do get that approval then it can be pushed directly to the social channel of course right? so of course yes. integration so it's a one-stop solution for that yeah and actually you know this is a company that i that i co-founded with my my wife noemi uh, we've been working together for nine years and this is actually the, the first company that we're building together and the reason why we built this company is because we were managing advertising agencies before we started that company and so we were trying to streamline that process. And we were mainly, you know, uh, using spreadsheets uh, to kind of, you know, lay out the editorial calendar. And that was, that was, you know, very time consuming and error prone and repetitive. And so when we tried to streamline that process with existing tools, we could only find two categories of tools. One was, you know, generic project management software where you can, you know, collaborate, but, it's, but you can't publish. Or we could find, you know, traditional schedulers where you could publish, but you couldn't collaborate. So what we built and what is Loomly is actually, you know, that tool that is great at collaboration and great at publishing. And how, um, a typical account, how many channels can I connect to? Is there any uh, So, you know, there, there is a plan for, for everyone, depending okay. on, you know, uh, you, in, the, in, the, in the most basic plan, you can connect up to 10 social accounts. Uh, so, you know, we try to be as open as, as we can. So what this is doing is it's taking my Slack group and my buffer schedule and putting them into one tool. Yeah, exactly. Actually, uh, you know, it's funny you mentioned those two tools because a long time ago we were in fact integrated with Buffer when we just got started and we were trying to cover only the, the collaboration part. And so we were kind of delegating the publishing part to Buffer. You know, it's a, they are a great company. We are competitors, but they are great. Um, and then, you know, Slack, we are actually currently integrated with them so that, you know, whenever someone in Loomly is, you know, sending you a notification or, or telling you, um, hey, Mike, uh, can you just, you know, update the copy of this post or, hey, it's, it's good to go, then you can receive a notification in Slack and then you can just click and go into the post. So, yes, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's a good, uh, it's a good uh, representation. And um, so what are some of the new things that you're working on? Um, well, tons of things. Uh, you know, we, we ship new features every every week. Uh, but you know, you know, um, we are uh, improving our asset management system, so the library, so that you know, you have always more features. Uh, we are providing you with more and more ways to create content from scratch. So we give you some ideas. Uh, you know, we tell you, hey, this is trending on Twitter, or so uh, you know, or... hey. Um, what we do, so we don't really do templates, but what we do is we have created what is called Post Builder. And it's kind of a, you know, a wizard that takes you step by step to uh, help you create a post from scratch. Uh, and so, like I said, you know, we give you some ideas, you pick the idea that you like, and then you select the channel that you want to publish to. And then, uh, you know, you can import um, some very cool features, um, sorry, some very cool images, for instance, from Unsplash, which is, you know, Kind of royalty free, or you can uh, even import some some gifs from from Giphy, um, and then from there you can edit your images so that you know you can just add text and filters and stuff. So you know all of a sudden you go from a blank page to a post, and that's you know really what we are uh, trying to do uh, with Lumi. Uh, and so you know as far as the exciting um, features that are coming up is you know we are working on on more ways to uh, monitor your presence online so that you can. 
uh, actually, you know, get even more feeds about, you know, what the conversation is about your brand online and respond to those and actually create even more content from there. So that's where we're going. And I mean, you know, this is a pretty crowded competitive landscape, right? So what's your key differentiator? And then, you know, how will you continue to develop barriers to entry? Um, so, you know, that's, uh, that's interesting. And, and I believe, you know, there are, um, I think there are three things that, you know, we are doing uh, maybe differently. Um, the first thing is, like I said, we created this tool because we couldn't find what we wanted online. And so uh, I believe the main thing is that we are actually solving a pain point, uh, like an actual problem that people have because we have that problem. Uh, and nowadays, you know, we have over 8,000 clients, uh, marketing teams across the world. So it looks like, you know, we're not alone. Uh, so we say, one, we address an existing pain point. Uh, number two, we try to design the product in the most user-friendly way possible. And that's usually, you know, the most frequent feedback that we get is that it's super easy to use. Um, and so I believe this is also something that is kind of different because uh, there are very, you know, great tools on the market, but it looks like our UI and UX uh, tend to stand out. And the last thing is um, we try very, very hard to deliver um, stellar customer support. Uh, and this is, again, something where we receive a lot of, you know, a lot of great feedback from our customers. And so I believe that, you know, once you're on a, like on a, on, on, you know, a major market that is like ours, which is big, uh, but still growing, um, you know, once you have like you address a pain point, you, you deliver like a very easy to use product and you are here for users when they have a question or a problem, I think you can win. And, you know, we've been growing pretty, pretty fast so far. And, and how long has the product been in the market? Uh, I wrote the first line of code. It was back in August, 2015, and we opened up in public beta in February, 2016. So it was actually our fifth anniversary just Monday. And like you said, you have a, a user base of 8,000 or so? Yeah, 8,000 paying customers. We are uh, you know, fast approaching the $5 million in annual recurring revenue market. Okay. Um, anything else we should know about the product or anything new features or anything that we should feature coming down the road? Um, you know, uh, we, we constantly announce and improve things, but, you know, uh, the, the best thing you can do is, you know, we have a 15 day free trial, no credit card required. So if you want to just uh, give it a try, you just go to loomly.com and, and you can start from there. And if you have any questions, like I said, uh, you know, we, uh, we are here in the chat for any questions that you may have. Uh, so no, I think that's pretty much it. Great. Well, we appreciate your time very much today. We will share this on the YouTube channel and, um, hopefully everybody can check it out. Thank you so much for having me.